Hello, in this video I am going to cover how to set up a Bootstrap 5 project. So this is the same if you're on Mac, Linux or Windows for development, the process is exactly the same. And okay, so what do you need? First of all, make sure you've got a web browser. Pretty much anyone will be fine, ideally one from the compatibility list. Because if you're going to be you know, testing it on the web browser, you want it to be compatible. I've got a video covering that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to open up this. And I'm going to Google Bootstrap 5, but I'll provide a link to this so you got everything that you need. And then let's go to here. But again, so this is the alpha. And we're going to go to download. So, so there's a few different ways that we can set it up. First of all, we go to get started. We can set it up using the quick start using a CDN, which is a content in content delivery network and the CSS and the JavaScript file that are required by Bootstrap 5 are stored on some online server and it pulls them really fast. So to do that we literally copy and paste this. So you will also need a editor. You can use something like Sublime which is a quick editor. You can use something like Brackets which is a bit more full-fledged in terms of an IDE and or you can use something else you know, if you have another preference, so you can use Sublime, you can use brackets. I'll be using brackets in this case. Both are free, so it is fantastic. Okay, so we are going to open up brackets, and I'm gonna go to open folder and go to desktop. I want to create it here. I want to call it Bootstrap. Call it whatever you want, your project. And okay, there's nothing in here currently. We need a new file. And I'm going to call this index.html. So remember, index.html is going to be the default that one is going to be launched up or a index.php file, potentially a home.html, but index is the main one. Okay, so what we want to do now is copy and paste this. Copy it properly. And save it. And if we were to go to desktop and launch up, if you literally just double click that, it launches it up. That's it, that's all there is. Let's inspect it, make sure that there's no errors in the console. There is not. And we are using a bootstrap now. So let me just quickly go over what the code is doing. So again, this is not a lesson on HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. I'm going to briefly glance over it. This is just the doc type for HTML, indicating it's a HTML5 file. This is the opening HTML tag with a corresponding closing tag. And this is where all your code will reside. And we specify it or the default code has specified a language of EN, which is English. You could specify something different if you want to. There's a head tag where you put all your metadata and any linkage that you have to stuff like CSS files, which is cascading style sheets, aka the way your website looks. So this is loading up the Bootstrap 5 style sheet. And there's just some stuff for the viewport. This is just helps with the responsive design and a character set, which is just the default UTF-8. The title, this is, if I say that and reload, that is what appears in the tab bar. I'll undo that. And in the body is the meat of your website, what you're actually seeing within, within here. If we go here, we've got a H1 tag with hello world in there. Then after that, we've got, you know, the script tags. So we have one for popper and we have one for the bootstrap JavaScript file. So this is the bare minimum that you need to get going. So there is another way of setting up bootstrap instead of a CDN, locally storing the files ourselves. So if we go to download and then from here, we can go to download. It is downloading it. I'm just going to click that. And in here, we have the file. Really, all we need is one of the JS files and one of the CSS files. 
So the GIS file, I mean the CSS really, you know, it, there's different ones. There's you know, a reboot version, I mean there's a min version, there's a regular version. It totally depends on what you, you know, want. So if you want the, I'll just like to say the regular bootstrap, copy that. Actually, you know what? I will copy both of these. I will go to desktop, go to bootstrap, paste them here and some nice organization. And I will select all except for bootstrap.css and delete. I will do the same for JS. I will select all except for bootstrap.js and delete. Okay, so that, what that means is, okay, so this is giving us some information. So you can either skip the download and go to Bootstrap CDM. If you're using our compiled JavaScript, don't forget to include popper.js via CDM, preferably before our JavaScript. So they do recommend that for popper that you use the CDM, which will, you know, we will keep to that format. So to modify this, so instead of having this big href, you see this bootstrap min.css, so instead of that, you want to put CSS, forward slash, there we go, and that's it. And that's the file right there. And we need to include the JavaScript file now. Again, Papa, we are leaving. So we need to get rid of that, JS, and there we go. So if we save that, Reload it and this has messed up. Let's have a look at what the problem is. Access to CSS style sheet from origin nor has been blocked by cause policy. Okay, so I think it's the integrity thing. Okay, so there we go. Because it's a local file, we don't need to do all those integrity checks. It's just when it's online. And we can get rid of it here as well. There we go. All errors have now disappeared. We can ignore the warnings. So it's dev tools file to load because you can't load content for that file. So you could leave those map files in there. But they're just some dev tools. But that's it. There we go. We have Bootstrap all set up. So I will provide you with the source code for this version and the CDN version as well. And you can go whichever method you want. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message as usual. And I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome video.